people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I am your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bhutan visit where he met with his counterpart Shering Topke and Bhutanese King Jigme Kesar. During his two-day state visit, PM Modi received Bhutan's highest civilian award. The high-profile visit signals the level to which New Delhi values its relationship with the Himalayan Kingdom. A report. Bhutan rolled out a red carpet with posters and banners as Indian Prime Minister recently made a memorable two-day state visit to Thimphu. PM Narendra Modi received a rousing welcome by Bhutanese PM Sharing Topke. The two ministers reviewed progress in wide-ranging areas of bilateral cooperation and issues of mutual interest. The neighbourhood first policy has been underlined during his visit which signifies the continuation of the close historical connections marked by friendship and collaboration between India and Bhutan. I give you this trust that in the coming five years हम दोनों देशों के पारस्पारिक सहयोग को नई ऊंचाई देंगे हम भारत भूटान के बीच कनेक्टिविटी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ट्रेड और एनर्जी सेक्टर में नई संभावनाओं पर काम करेंगे इंडिया एंड भूटान साइन सेवरल डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू बोलस्टर बायलैटरल टाइज PM Modi's historic visit underscores India's commitment to further strengthening bilateral relations with Bhutan across various sectors including trade and infrastructure development. PM Modi inaugurated the Gyaltsuin Jetsun Pema Wangchuk Mother and Child Hospital, a mother and child hospital fully funded by the Indian government in Thimphu. Prime Minister is going to inaugurate this wonderful hospital. This hospital is a mother and child hospital, the Gelsen Jitsun Pema Wangchuk Mother and Child Hospital that has been fully funded by the government of India. And this is going to go a long way in improving the lives of the Bhutanese, but especially the health care for our mothers and for our children. Bhutan holds a special place in India's foreign policy. Apart from being close geographically, the two countries have similar values and strategic objectives. PM Modi was conferred with the highest civilian award of Bhutan on his first ever state visit to the country. Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dasho Shering Topke, extended his congratulations to Prime Minister Narendra Modi for being honoured with Bhutan's highest civilian award, the Order of the Drug Galpo. During the visit, PM Modi also met with the monarch Jigme Kesar Nyamgil Wangchuk and was hosted by the king at the Linkana Palace for a private dinner. The entire family of the Bhutan's king was present for the dinner, including his children. The fact is that no Indian Prime Minister except Narendra Modi has received a private dinner from the king before. 
This historic trip of Indian PM to Bhutan has laid the groundwork for deeper cooperation and friendship between the two countries. New Delhi and Thimphu continue to navigate more opportunities. This visit serves as a testament to the importance of nurturing friendships and building bridges across borders. And the journey of collaboration between India and Bhutan continues to chart a path towards a brighter and more interconnected future for both the countries. Baloch activists are urging the international authorities to take action on the ongoing genocide of their community members in Pakistan. They are demanding the United Nations and human rights organizations to hold the authorities accountable for the crimes committed in Balochistan. Activists want a fact-finding mission headed by the United Nations Working Group to investigate the matter. During the ongoing 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council, a side event hosted by the Baloch Human Rights Council highlighted various aspects of the atrocities faced by the Baloch people in Pakistan. A report. The human rights violations and enforced disappearances continue to devastate Pakistan's poor province of Balochistan. The state-sponsored violence against the common people have left the families of the victims in unimaginable distress. Time and again, human rights activists have called upon the United Nations to dispatch a fact-finding mission to investigate human rights violations in Balochistan. During the ongoing 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council, a side event hosted by the General Secretary of the Baloch Human Rights Council highlighted various aspects of the atrocities faced by the Baloch people in Pakistan. We discussed that despite being a signatory of various human rights instruments and conventions, Pakistan continues to violate uh, the rights of the oppressed nations uh, uh, under its uh, control uh, with impunity and uh, without any accountability. Uh, and uh, we also uh, discussed that uh, uh, about the human rights situation in Balochistan that there has been an alarming increase in number of enforced disappearances and acts of judicial killings in Balochistan. Pakistan is top of the Pakistan. Baloch activists are urging the international authorities to take action on the ongoing genocide of their community members. They are demanding the United Nations and human rights organizations to take action and hold the authorities accountable for the crimes committed in Balochistan. Activists want a fact-finding mission headed by the United Nations Working Group to investigate the matter. In the Pakistan's most underdeveloped area of Balochistan, the country's intelligence agency, Inter-Services Intelligence, has been accused of committing all kinds of atrocities including abduction, killing and torture to instill fear. Injustice and strong feeling of alienation has forced some Baloch people to pick up arms who are continuously targeting the Pakistani army personnel and Chinese assets in the region. The Baloch does not want to live with Pakistan anymore. We want the Pakistan army out of Balochistan. Pakistan cannot feed this huge army. They want to loot and plunder our gold to survive. We will see that we're going to stop all that. Pakistan cannot sustain. Pakistan is a failed state. Pakistan is going to die without Balochistan. And Baloch people have risen up. We want to kick the Pakistani army out. Baloch activists claim that their province was illegally occupied by Pakistani forces on March 27, 1948. Baloch community worldwide observes the Black Day on March 27. This year on the occasion, Baloch National Movement, Netherlands called for global attention to Baloch genocide and organized a protest rally in Amsterdam. Holding placards and banners, protesters denounced the forced occupation of Balochistan by Pakistani forces.
Protesters were also seen distributing pamphlets to raise awareness among locals about the Balochistan issue. Let's now move to Bangladesh, which marked its Independence Day on March 26th. In 1971, on the same day, Pakistan had launched military attacks against Bangladeshi civilians, students and armed personnel who collectively demanded separation from West Pakistan. The war continued for nine months and finally culminated in the country's independence on December 16th, 1971. When the inhabitants of the then East Pakistan were fighting the Pakistan army for their liberation and for their new dream nation, India was on their side. Since 1971, the bilateral relations have reached a new height through several agreements and mutual understandings. Take a look. Bangladesh on March 26 celebrated the 53rd Independence Day. On the occasion, the Bangladeshi government organized elaborate programs at national level. India's border security forces exchanged suites with their Bangladeshi counterparts to mark the day. A joint beating retreat ceremony was also held to commemorate the occasion at the integrated Czech post at Fulbari town in Indian state of West Bengal. Bangladesh, formerly East Pakistan, was liberated from Pakistan after a nine-month-long war of independence. On March 26, 1971, Pakistan launched military attacks against Bangladeshi civilians, students and armed personnel who collectively demanded separation from West Pakistan. The war continued for nine months and finally culminated in the country's independence on December 16, 1971. India and Bangladesh have maintained close ties since then. They have sacrificed their life, Indian nationals, for our freedom. So our heads up to them and we are really grateful. When the inhabitants of then East Pakistan were fighting the Pakistan army for their liberation and for their new dream nation, India was on their side. India's support for Bangladesh liberation struggle was not only at the formal level but also at the people-to-people -people level. Since 1971, the bilateral relations have reached a new height through several agreements and mutual understandings. The Land Boundary Agreement is one classic example which was a major milestone in developing bilateral cooperation and ensuring regional security. The relationship between India and Bangladesh is anchored in history, culture, language and shared values of secularism, democracy and countless other similarities between the two countries. It is based on sovereignty, equality, trust, understanding and win-win partnership that goes far beyond a strategic partnership. India and Bangladesh share bonds of history, language, culture and other multitude of commonalities. This relationship is not only a mere strategic one, but it is connected to the umbilical cord of the Indian subcontinent. The relationship has expanded exponentially over the last five decades be it regional connectivity, trade, commerce, energy needs of Bangladesh or human development and other key social indicator indexes. When the planet was hit by the pandemic of COVID-19, both these countries complemented each other. And in the recent past, the border issues and other conflicts have been settled without exchange of any bullet. India was one of the first countries along with Bhutan to recognize Bangladesh as a sovereign state in December 1971. Bhutan's king also arrived in Dhaka on March 25th and attended celebrations for Independence Day. The king who was accompanied by queen, cabinet members and high-ranked government officials were greeted by Bangladesh President Mohammad Sahabuddin on his arrival. 
The Bhutan king visited the South Asian neighbor after more than a decade also to strike several business deals with Dhaka. Time now for Asia this week the stories from across the continent. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba visited New Delhi on March 28 to advance Kyiv's vision of a path to peace in Ukraine and to strengthen ties with India. Kuleba, who was seen paying his respect at the memorial of the iconic Indian freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi, had written on social media platform X that he was building on the dialogue between the two nations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held separate phone calls last week with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Russian President Vladimir Putin ahead of Kuleba's visit. Ukraine hopes to hold a summit of world leaders without Russian participation in the coming months to advance its The country has long been a draw for same-sex couples. It has a vibrant and visible LGBT social scene for locals and expatriates. Thailand also has targeted campaigns to attract LGBT travelers. In a bid to reduce food waste and adopt a sustainable approach during this year's month of Ramadan, the UAE launched a campaign to donate leftover food to those in need. Launched in 2017, the UAE Food Bank, a non-profit organization, vows to reduce food waste by 30% by 2027 and to double local and global partnerships to manage food surplus in order to reduce carbon emissions. البنك الحمد لله ومنذ تأسيسه في عام 2017 استطاع توزيع ما يقارب 70 مليون وجبة على المستفيدين داخل الدولة وخارج الدولة البنك طبعا عنده أهداف استراتيجية واضحة منبثقة من خارطة استراتيجية 2023-2027 مضاعفة عدد المستفيدين من بنك الطعام مضاعفة الشراكات المحلية والخارجية تقليل نفايات الطعام بما يقارب 30% حتى عام 2027 The food bank encourages residents, supermarkets, restaurants and hotels to send over their surplus food and products which they then distribute to those in need through trusted local or international charities. The festival of Holi was recently celebrated with great enthusiasm across different parts of India. people were seen throwing colored water and powders on one another in joyous celebration the festival celebrates love and signifies a time of rebirth a time to embrace the positive and let go of negative energy take a look the indian festival of colors holi is celebrated on the full moon day of the Hindu month of Falgun. This cheerful custom denotes the coming of spring and the decimation of joy and good vibes. Holi is celebrated in different forms in different parts of India and the world. This year, the festival was celebrated with fervor on March 26th. Singing, dancing, traditional sweets and savory dishes were in full display on the occasion Gurugram hosted a vibrant Fuloki Holi celebration on March 24th uniting diplomats from various countries in a colorful extravaganza This unique celebration highlighted the spirit of harmony and inclusivity fostering cross-cultural bonds 
amidst the joyous festival of colors. Priests were seen chanting mantras while worshipping the idol of Lord Krishna and Goddess Radha. They offered different types of flowers to the idol to mark the beginning of the holy festival. People were seen dancing to the tunes of Hare Rama Hare Krishna. Foreign diplomats who attended the event expressed their joy to be a part of the festivities. This is a very unique uh, uh, Indian uh, 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 festival of the color and uh, me and uh, my family were extremely delighted to take part on this celebration. I am very, very happy are here with the holy with flower. It is very beautiful, very, very human, very human. Uh, thank you for this invitation. Uh, Hare Bol, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. On the occasion of Holi, markets witnessed a surge of people. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's masks and water guns garnered significant attention, becoming popular items. The markets were adorned with festive decorations in preparation for the colourful festivities. Shoppers crowded the markets, indulging in last-minute purchases before the festival. In the historical town of Barsana, locals were seen throwing laddus while singing devotional songs honouring Radha and Krishna. This traditional festivity, deeply rooted in the region's culture, adds an extra layer of excitement and joy to the holy celebrations. Predominantly celebrated in the Indian subcontinent of India and Nepal, Holi has also spread to other regions of the world through the Indian diaspora. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.